Welcome back, Stas23 here, back again with some knife therapy. And today I have for you the Petrified Fish PF868 Bunta, something like that. This knife came in at $33 and uh, let's get some specs out of the way really quick. You have a total length of 7.9 inches, so it's in that medium size range. You have a blade length of 3.5 inches, a grip area from here to the back of 3.7 inches, a pretty stout blade stock thickness of 0.138, and the behind the edge thickness on my particular knife is around 14 thousandths, sharpened at 21 degrees per side. All right, before going further, I, I'm trying something different. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this method of editing. And uh, if y'all like it, I'll keep doing it like this. But let's take a closer look at this. What really sold me on this knife was uh, this attractive looking blade, or at least I think it, it's a nice looking blade, nice sheep's foot. And as you can see, it has like a slicer style grind where the grind goes higher and higher all the way up toward the tip. So it's gonna be a little little slicier up here in the front and then your st more strength back in the back area. Um, and the geometry on this knife is nice. Like I said, coming down to 14 thousandths and that was another thing that it looked like it'd be a good slicer. And at $33, I figured why not take a shot. Your blade steel is a D2, which you can see right here on the flipper tab. You have a satin finish on the knife. Um, you do have somewhat of a ramp right here onto the spine with some jimping, but that jimping is, I would call it mild traction. And I usually overshot if I'm gonna use that area. Now you can grab back here if you want, but I tend to put my thumb forward up onto the spine a little bit more so than back here. And like I said in the pictures, you know, that blade and the slice, the, the slicer style grind, you know, got me to buy it. And luckily I was right, right away when I started uh, slicing into the cardboard, I found that the knife was extremely, extremely slicey. Um, I was push cutting a lot of it and it was zipping through it without an issue whatsoever. And also, being that the blade is all one ba gradual belly to it, I found that I was not sliding out of the cuts like you would with, like, say, a clip point or something like that. Um, I was staying into the cut, mainly in this area right here. That's always a nice thing, especially if you do a lot of cardboard cutting in your day-to-day -day EDC task. Uh, that's probably what I cut the most. <clears throat> So I, I like, you know, when the blade functions well in that uh, type of cutting. Also found that um, the blade up here in the front <clears throat> really excelled whenever I got to the sisal rope cutting. Uh, that little bit of belly right there allowed me to push down into the cutting board and I was hitting about right here in most of the uh, cuts and for for the majority of it, I was push cutting. I did 40 cuts with the sisal rope and it, it push cut every single one of them almost. And when I didn't push cut, if I had to do a little bit more cutting because I didn't get all the way to the bottom, I'd push in there and just do a slight rocking motion and that worked outstanding. Um, <clears throat> one thing though, if you do a lot of cutting on cutting board and stuff like that, you're only gonna be able to use about this portion because your knuckles will come in contact with the cutting surface. Uh, not something I do a whole lot, and usually to avoid that, I'll grab it in a pinch grip like this and do the cutting, which I do a lot of the rope cutting like that. <clears throat> That's just the way I, I usually grab it. It's more comfortable for me. And uh, this type of cutting is usually whenever I'm trying to get some more power behind the cut, like into say wood, cardboard, rope, leather, you know, rubber, anything that's gonna require a lot of force, I'm usually grabbing it in the hammer grip. That's just the most stable grip for me. <laughs> um, after I did all the testing, the edge remained good. Um, I will say up here in the front, after I finished the last test, it had all it had left is the working edge, but like I said, I did 40 cuts with sisal rope, so, 
you know, I don't expect this to be the, the best D2 in the world or anything. It's, I, I don't even know, you know, it could not even be D2 for all I know, but it, it acts like D2, especially in the sharpening. And um, it performed great, you know, for day-to-day -day tasks for a $33 knife. One thing that I noticed uh, after sharpening that they do have a sharpening notch right here, but it barely clears that plunge. They have that swooping, swooping plunge grind that goes on an angle right there. And as you can see, it has already starting to widen up there in the back. Yep, and you can see where my stones contacted uh, the plunge right there as well. Um, so uh, yeah, definitely something I wish they would have maybe extended. Another aspect of this blade shape that I enjoy is coming up on it like this. Uh, they even have like a little indention into the scales. You can come up, come up on the uh, knife, and you can use you can guide the that you know tip being it's not an upswept tip, and you can guide it very easily in the stuff. Or if you you know were processing game or something like that, you can you can grab it right here and you know use that belly. Now for for game, it's not going to be as good as say a clip point because you, you're going to have that that really swooping belly that you can you know do very svelte cuts into stuff like that. But you know getting into a package or something, or you know scoring something or you know doing detailed cuttings and stuff like that I, I, I like that type of blade shape now on to another excellent part of this knife and that is its action the detent has a nice strong break to it nice positive click very positive click uh, and once you break that detent this thing comes rocketing out you know very very hard uh, now it's it's a positive detent, but it's not too strong to where when you're flipping it It doesn't feel like it's gonna you know, break your finger or something like that and it also is uh, Dialed in to where you can use both deployment methods your flipper tab and your blade hole um, You can easily access that blade hole both right-handed and left-handed uh, The Edges on the hole are a little sharp, um, and you can see in that inside portion as well. It it's sharp, but that said, it allows you to get a good purchase on it to where you don't feel like you're going to slide off, and that that makes it easy for me to do left-handed. Uh, so I don't mind it there. It's not you know feeling like it's going to rip off my skin or anything, and I can spidey flick it. It is a little strong. The detent is a little strong for the spidey flick, but you can do it. Um, I found that the flipper works best, and you can thumb flick it very easily as well. I can slow roll it, but it's not comfortable to slow roll because of the, the sharper edges on that blade hole. You have a well-designed flipper tab that is canted back some, and it has some jimping right there that does a great job of gripping the finger uh, so you don't slide off of it when you go to deploy it. Uh, you can do the light switch and the push button by putting your finger on top of it like that. However, I found that the light switch was the most comfortable for me and the easiest for me to do. Now to the handle. Um, your hardware, you have the Petrified Fish PF uh, logoed pivot there, and on the back side, you have a Torx T8 fastener. Your body screws are both T6 along with your pocket clip screws. You have black contoured uh, G10 scales on this one that uh, have a smooth finish on it, but you have some very slight uh, you have micro milling lines going this way, so it offers a, a little bit of texture. And then you have the little scoop uh, cut in right there to get the top of that thumb hole. So nicely done. And you have a whopping huge lanyard oval right here in the back. Yeah, you could tie a boat anchor to that if you'd like. You have a black G10 backspacer, polished stainless steel liners. Um that have been heavily skeletonized, skeletonized uh, to reduce the weight. So 
Sorry about that if it's too bright. Uh, on the top and bottom, you have a deep carry pocket clip that is only tip up right hand carry only, which I think is a missed opportunity, uh, being that it's easily uh, it's easy to open left handed as uh, well as disengaging the lock bar. So I think they could have, you know, done well with putting a clip for the lefties on this one. Let's take a look at it in the pocket. Uh, it the clip has a nice little ramp to it. Um, goes in, in and out of the pocket nicely and completely buries into the pocket. Uh, it does hug the left side, I mean the right side of the pocket when in carry. And it's easy to get it in and out of the pocket. It's not going to shred up your pocket as well. While in the pocket, you're gonna feel it. It's not a heavy knife, but it's it's a chunky monkey. I, I definitely knew I had a knife in my pocket. So first in grams, 140.5 grams and 4.959 ounces. So, you know, for a budget knife, that's perfectly fine. Um, and it just depends on, you know, what you like to carry. And another excellent aspect of this knife uh, we just talked about the scales and them being contoured along with having a very neutral grip and some extra thickness in those scales fills out the hand nicely and the ergonomics were outstanding in every grip imaginable. Um, I had no issues whatsoever. The pocket clip stayed out of the way of my hand. Um, and it was it was uh, very nice doing all the cutting. I didn't have any painful moments or hot spots, and that's always something nice when I do as much testing as I do, because I get permanent calluses and blisters on my hands all the time. Let's take a quick look at the lock up. You have about I'd say thirty to forty percent of lock up right there, uh, rock solid, no play in any direction. And um, the access to that lock bar is nice because they have this little choil area cut out and you do have a chamfer on that lock to disengage it. No problems whatsoever to get to it. Watch the action. We already saw the opening action, but just watch this. $33. Whoop. Very controlled drop. It, it stops right there at the end, and I had to tighten this one up because it was it was it was guillotining me. But I mean, basically, all I have to do is turn it, and it drops. Uh, plus, I don't know if you can see in there, but you do have a detent ball ramp. So whenever you're disengaging that lock, it's not going to have to jump over that, and it makes a smooth transition, so you don't feel it whatsoever. Especially sometimes when you disengage that lock, it wants to pop back if it doesn't have the detent ball ramp. Uh, that's just depending on the placement of that detent ball. Quick size comparisons, Ontario Rat 1, Ontario Rat 2, Petrified Fish Beluga, and Kaiser Large Sheepdog. Excellent size comparison here. Western Active Honey Badger, CJRB Krog. All right, nitpicks and complaints. But you do have to remember this is a $33 knife. Uh, of course, I would have liked to see them uh, widen up the sharpening notch, so I would have some sharpening light before it starts to widen up in the back right there. This is probably not going to come out on the camera too well, but I don't love the satin finish. It looks good there, but it has some splotchiness to it, and it looks kind of funny in certain lights. Uh, and it's a fingerprint magnet. I would have much rather see a stonewash finish there because you know, this would be a great work knife uh, that you know, could hide the wear if you if you didn't like uh, to see wear marks all over your blade. Also, um, they blasted this inside finish on the opening hole, which on D2 is a terrible idea because that's just gonna make it more porous. And I already have some rust spots forming on the inside of mine. And it's not like I left this out in the elements or anything. D2 is just a, not a stainless steel, so. Uh, I'll I'll probably remove that and put some more EDCI on it. Hopefully that'll take care of it. Uh, also, you know, talking about steel, I would have I would have been really really excited if this was in 14C28N or 154CM. Um, however, you know, it is what it is. It's still a good knife at $33. So overall value, 
like I said, $33, of course, I highly recommend it. This is an excellent knife. It has great action. I mean, look at that. Look at that drop shut action, rockets out, multiple opening methods. Uh, ergos are fantastic. Super slicey, good uh, geometry on that cutting edge right there. So what's there not to love at 33 bucks? Uh, another home run right here. Um, and you know, the, the, the first one that I kind of discovered was the petrified fish beluga. Both of these are excellent buys. This is a beast of a knife, like wide in all dimensions. Uh, but you can't go wrong with either one of these. Uh, I'm going to see if I can find this available. It was available the other day, but I just checked and it wasn't. So I, I apologize for that. But if I do find somewhere where this is available, I will have links down below. So there you go. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing, amazing day. And I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.